Hello everyone, Matt the Lesser here, back for episode 3 of our Terra Mystica Fan Factions Basic Strategy Series. We've already covered the Conspirators and the Architects, and today we're back with another video intended at viewers who are familiar with the game of Terra Mystica, have played some basic factions, normal games, and are now interested in trying the new fan factions that are currently in beta testing and soon to be released, uh, available on Board Game Arena and coming soon to your home, hopefully. Um, but you are thinking about playing the fan factions and you're interested, and so today we are going to talk about the Prospectors. Um, another cool, very different faction, definitely the most unique of the ones that we have covered so far. And so for those of you who watched the videos before, you know the deal, I don't do video editing. So this is the no frills, one take, basic strategy overview of the Prospectors. All right, let's go. So let's first look at the Prospectors board. Now this is a crazy board. There is a whole ton of stuff going on here. So let's make sure we go over all of it. Um, so let's first start with the production. The prospectors have different production on all of their buildings. So dwelling track, they have a few holes, right? So it's not the standard fire faction or engineers holes. They get their first three dwellings, normal production, one worker, base income. But then after that, it's every other one is a hole. So the prospectors, early strategy advice, don't necessarily want to have a huge amount of dwellings strewn out across the board. They want to have a more moderated approach in building dwellings interspersed with some of their larger buildings as we go along. Next, let's look at the TPs. They do the opposite of a lot of factions. Their early TPs produce more coins and their later TPs produce less coins. Um, this is a flip for most factions who have fewer TPs on the er or fewer coins on the early TPs and more coins on the later TPs. This is because prospectors are all about coins and we will get into that in just a second. You'll see this also on the temples. Their first temple produces three coins. There's no other faction that produces coins on temples. Some produce power, most produce priests, but the prospectors on their first temple, three coins, and on their third temple, four coins, only producing a priest on the middle temple. And this uh, becomes a very important thing when we think about when do we build temples as the prospectors. Um, their sanctuary does produce normal priests, there's some normal production there, um, but is an expensive sanctuary at uh, eight coins. And their stronghold, and we'll talk about its ability in just a second, but three power income and an 11 coin cost, the most expensive stronghold in Terra Mystica. Um, and there's a reason that it costs so much. It's very good and can often return its value uh, in coins, but 11 coins is also Nothing to sneeze at. Then let's take a quick look at the prospectors upper right here. So as you can see, they do not have normal spades and normal dig advances. And then, yeah, in fact, they don't even have normal spades. They have these golden spades. And you can see by the wheel here that the prospectors have to make golden spades in order to transform uh, hexes into their home brown color territory. And the reason that this iconography is different is because they actually, when they get regular spades, you see down here on their book ability, they turn those into priests. And this is just a bit of a balancing act uh, in the game so that when they get spades from, for example, a bonus tile or a cult spade or a power action, those they don't actually use to transform. Instead, they have this ability where they use four coins as a spade, a golden spade, and that's what allows them to transform hexes into different territory and into their home color of brown. When they do that, they get a, uh, a return in addition to the, the transformation, they get a return of a victory point and a power. So there's a little bit of analogy here to uh, their fellow brown faction, the halflings, who get a uh, a victory point every time they use a spade. But the prospectors, as you might imagine, because they're using coins to do those transformations instead of normal spades, play very, very differently from the halflings and basically all other factions, uh, or facets of the faction. Uh, two other things to point out here on the board. 
R1, they start with eight power in bowl one and four power in bowl two, one of the lowest starting amounts uh, in Terramisca. And this is, again, just to offset a bit of the fact that they can uh, have some pretty explosive starts because of their easy access to spades right out the gate from they do start with the normal 15 coins. Um, but this means that even if they get a three power tile in round one, they need leech or spend one golden spade to get enough... Um, power to be able to take one of the four power cost, power actions, workers, coins, etc. Coins action, as you might expect, very, very good for the prospectors. We're gonna come back to that, but uh, they're gonna want the coins action uh, early and often uh, in this game because those coins turn right back into spades. Uh, two other things to note here on the prospectors board, actually three, one is normal shipping. Gotta have something normal on the board, right? Um, uh, and then, the other two are, uh, they only start with two base workers, and then they do start with the normal two dwellings, so they will produce three in the first round. But that means compared to most factions, which have six workers, not counting whatever they get from their round one bonus tile, the prospectors only have five, so that does limit a little bit of what they can do in round one. And then finally, they start with three steps on the Earth Cult, which is obviously very good if there are lots of Earth rewards, and completely useless if there are not Earth rewards. So, um, the, and the Prospectors, because they don't produce priests on their first temple, uh, often struggle to produce priests a little bit. Um, and so are not a particularly culty faction, but if there are early Earth rewards, can really give the Prospectors a boost due to these three native um, Earth cult steps. Finally, last thing on the board is, let's talk a little bit about what the Stronghold does, and then later we'll talk about when you might use it. So this is, there's a lot going on here, um, but in a gist, the stronghold does two things. Number one is it reduces the cost of golden spades from the normal four coins per spade to three coins. So that's one of the ways that you can start to make up some of the coins. So if you can build the stronghold before you do a lot of digging, uh, it can pay back in quite a number of, of coins just in terms of um, how many it's saving you from that reduced golden spade cost. But maybe more importantly is this button that the prospectors get after they build the stronghold, including the round in which they build it. And what this button says is that for every trading post that is of your opponents that is up on the board, you get a coin. So it doesn't count your own, but say across your three opponents, they have a total of six trading posts sitting out. You hit that button and you instantly get six coins. So this is actually the main way that this stronghold pays back coins. And if you get into a game where opponents have lots of trading posts up early, it can more than over pay back the 11 coin costs of that stronghold. Um, but you have to have those 11 coins uh, to spend and it's gonna take you a couple rounds to, uh, maybe even like three rounds to recoup that investment. And so then it's just a timing trade-off consideration. And also the four workers, not something to scoff at. Um, you know, both coins and workers, actually, the prospectors, like, they always want more of both because the workers allow them to build the buildings and the coins allow them to both build buildings and dig. So they just need a lot of resources throughout the whole game. Um, but if you can spare them, the ROI on the, on the building can be quite good, the stronghold, that is. Okay, so there's the board. I know it's a lot. The first time you play with those prospectors, make sure you sit down, remember all of the differences. If you're playing with physical pieces, kind of pick them up and double check because uh, the first few times I played these guys, I was like, where's that first hole in the dwelling track? How many coins does my second TP give me? How do I produce a priest? It's just very different from every other faction. Um, and it does kind of balance out, um, but you, you really got to learn and sort of uh, make sure that you take care, right? Um, so just a suggestion when you're playing the prospectors. Now, they are a very fun faction. Um, when do you want to play them? Uh, as you might imagine, the prospectors love coins. So big coin tiles, four coins in a cold step, and six coins, very good tiles to be in the game for the prospectors. So much in fact to say that the absence of definitely both of those tiles, but even if just the six coin tile were absent, would really make me hesitate to play the prospectors or significantly uh, reduce the amount that I would wanna bid on them in an auction. Um, and there's sort of two reasons for that. Number one is just the overall presence of coins in the game. If you're in a low coin game, the prospectors are gonna have a hard enough time 
finding all their coins to dig and stuff. But the other reason is that the six coin tile is one of the best tiles for the prospectors to get in round one. And very few faction, other factions actually often want that tile. And so you're almost guaranteed to be able to get it. And that coin can, that tile and those six coins can really help you explode and uh, help your economy start to snowball in round one. And so if it's not in the game and you can't take it, maybe cold coins, if you can get it as an alternative would be okay. Um, but it's just, uh, it's just a much slower way to start the game, and you feel like you might feel like you're going to constantly be trying to catch up for the for the rest of the game. Um, other tiles that are good to be in the game for the prospectors are particularly the TP scoring tile. So this is uh, we talked about how their first TP has uh, four coin production, their second TP has three coin production, and you want lots of coins. So the prospectors are a faction that like to build and have TPs sitting up early and often, um, unlike many other factions, and so therefore the TP scoring tile is excellent to be in the game for the prospectors. And then finally is the priests. Um, and that's because that first temple, um, well one, they wanna leave TPs up so they're producing coins. So they actually have less incentive to build temples quite as early as a lot of other factions. And then even when they do, that first temple produces coins, not priests. So finding priests can be particularly hard for the prospectors. And so having this priest tile in the game can actually be really, really important for them. Um, as far as factions go, uh, I'll say this every video, the color wheel matters. Um, but in particular, uh, between maybe uh, gray and green, which are the two colors that are opposite brown, on base map, I found gray is the really synergistic one with brown. They have both their uh, normal starting spots border each other. They can typically be a lot of leash and they really don't get in each other's way uh, at all. And so that's maybe a little bit of an extra one. Although because the prospectors can dig around so well, um, I would say, neighbors are a little bit less of a big deal to them. Like, even if they're sandwiched, they can be playable if the other conditions are right. Uh, black, even though I've got it listed here, is probably the, the biggest interference, is not a huge problem. Yellow, like, if you have a neighbor, uh, it's not a reason to, to totally shy away from the prospectors. Maybe devalue them a little bit in your comparisons or in an auction, um, but they've got more flexibility in terms of uh, where they can go because of their... Um, relatively easier access to, to spades and, and transformation of hexes. As far as the round tiles go on what's good for the prospectors. Um, so there's sort of two themes that you're gonna see here in the early rounds. Number one is trading posts and towns. And this is because, uh, for example, round one trading post particularly is really nice because the prospectors often wanna build two trading posts in round one so they can score those. And then also the towns. Um, and that's because while it's difficult to actually get enough to, to build a town in round one, they can very easily town often in round two or round three. Um, and getting an early town to just keep that um, economy snowballing is nice. Um, and then the other thing you're going to see here in these early rounds is brown cult rewards. So remember, the prospectors start with three steps on earth. Um, and so if you have this spade tile in round one or round two, the fact that it's spade scoring is actually not relevant to the prospectors and most likely you won't score it or maybe you'll score two if you happen to grab like the spade bonus tile. But these extra coins in round one or round two for the prospectors can be huge, can snowball so much. And especially if you can additionally either take a favor tile that gives you further steps on brown or you find a priest and you're able to get it onto earth. Um, you know, if you get first priest to earth in a round one uh, spade scoring and you at the end of round one instantly gain an extra six coins as a pro as a faction that really wants coins and uses them to dig that's just super powerful um, and with the uh, the town tile is also really cool because you'll remember that if you get a spade as the prospectors it instantly turns into a priest and this can actually be a better way of finding priests as the prospectors than actually trying to produce them which means to produce them you either need to have two temples or a sanctuary up um, and so sometimes if you can get like an early cult coins or an early priest to earth on a town scoring round um, and get that priest back, then you have a priest, you could send another one to the cult and maybe you can actually uh, play some kind of culty games as prospectors if you can get turn early cult spade rewards into more priests, into more cult spade rewards, uh, and it can kind of snowball from there. The other things that I've highlighted here as good for the prospectors are round four and five TP and big building rounds. 
And this goes, this is sort of the strategy. Like you don't need this to play the prospectors, but if these exist, it points to a game where as the prospectors, you can build the stronghold. So the prospector stronghold, as I said, you have to evaluate the ROI, whether or not you can basically afford to get it down and whether it will pay itself back. Um, and you want to do that is games where hopefully you're scoring it and also you are um, gonna get a lot of coins back from that TP button. If you have round four or round five TP scoring, other factions are going to build lots of TPs in those rounds. And then if you, in a round either right before or right after, build your stronghold, you will be able to take advantage of all those TPs that everyone else is building and get all those coins back for yourself. Not to mention that you can also uh, very easily take advantage of those TP scoring rounds. Um, yourselves and so if you see this like round four TP round five big building or round four big building round five TP that's a game where you're looking mm, prospector stronghold might be a good candidate uh, to aim for this game on the other side um, on the bonus tiles I wouldn't say there's any bonus tiles that are really bad for the prospectors um, even this big building tile like they can use it because the extra workers are, are good for anyone but given that they are not going to build a stronghold in the first couple rounds of the game, nor are they likely to build a sanctuary in the first couple rounds of the game, there are lots of factions that do like to build those big buildings early rounds in the game, and so they might be able to use this tile a little bit better than the prospectors. And then similarly with shipping, they just don't generate a lot of priests, as we've already talked about, and so it's unlikely that they're going to uh, advance shipping a lot early in the game, and so this is just a relatively less good uh, tile for them. On the uh, scoring track, as we just talked about, they don't want to build big buildings, even temples often in round one. And so temple or big building scoring is not good for them in round one, big building scoring in round two, this temple scoring also probably isn't great for them in, in round two. I put it here over here in round three, actually, partially because if you can get some priests to the cults, you can get some coins back, which are great. But also because round three is usually about the time where you're ready to start building temples as the prospectors. You don't want to build them earlier than that because you're covering up those super valuable early TPs. That first one that gives four coins and that second one that gives three coins. Why would you spend a bunch of resources to build a temple that is going to give you the same three coins? Like what you really want to do is you want to wait until you build that temple on that top of that third or that fourth TP. Or maybe you build it on top of the first one, but then you build the first one back right away. Um, and so that's likely not to happen until like round three or round four. Um, I also have these dwelling scorings in here, round three, round four. They're not actually that bad for the prospectors. I just find that because prospectors want to kind of consistently build dwellings over the course of the game due to those holes and wanting to balance with their TPs, they don't really love to have rounds where they're trying to spam out a whole ton of dwellings. They also don't often do shipping strategies. It's a lot more digging, and that has to progress because they only have so many coins at any given time. Um, and so... Dwelling scorings in general, actually, um, are probably not great for the prospectors, but particularly factions that, there are factions out there who can like span five, six, seven dwellings in a round three or round four uh, dwelling round, and they're just gonna take advantage of this much better than prospectors. Like, I would much rather see TPs, towns uh, scoring through the mid game as the prospectors. Um, last thing to note is I didn't put the spade bonus tile here and use the good or the bad. Um, and you might think, why would it not be in the bad? Um, this is a faction that generates its own spades, and so it's going to be better for other factions. Well, the flip side of that is that the Prospectors, unlike many factions who don't like that spade tile, like the Giants, for example, who can't use it at all, Prospectors actually can use it pretty well. They take that spade tile, and it's basically a priest in two coins, which is better than this priest tile that I have over here. Um, and so while it's good for other factions, the prospectors can also use it and can deny it. And so I kind of put it in the like, eh, camp. If it's there, great, try to use it. If it's not, you can also to play totally fine a game without it. So um, that's one that doesn't really impact my decision either way, uh, whether or not to consider playing the prospectors. Okay, now we know when to play them. How do we play them? Let's talk about the map. So uh, as always in this series, we are focusing on base map only. Um, and the prospectors I've highlighted with stars here, the two primary starting spots that most brown factions on base map love to start in most games, E6 and F5. Uh, E6 is just an amazing spot. Um, it's center of the map. It gets a ton of leech. It has two hexes that are only a single spade away. Um, and it's just a really, really great spot. Um, and F5, similarly, 
ton of leech, two hexes that are one spade away. Most games, especially if you don't have black or yellow in the game, these are the two spots that you're gonna wanna start off. Um, if you do have black or yellow, or maybe in particularly both black and yellow, that's when you might think about starting on um, one of these other brown hexes, B2 or F7. Um, if there's black in the game and they start on G5, sometimes F7 can give you a little bit of easier access. You won't need a bridge or shipping to get off of uh, this town over here. And uh, sometimes if you get like a, a blue, black, yellow situation over here in the West, starting on B2 um, can kind of play toward where the action is on the board um, and, and interrupt a little bit of those factions expansion. Um, prospectors actually don't need and rely on leech nearly as much as other factions. I mean, look, like every faction wants a ton of leech. Let's, let's, let's be clear. Um, but because they are not, for example, needing power action spades in round one, they can get by with a little bit of less leech than other factions. But they do really want neighbors. So because they need to build TPs. Um, and so it's not like you can play like the Swarmlings and play a big isolationist strategy. But if you can get, for example, just a single neighbor F6 gray here, um, and there's no one else on this Eastern continent, that's fine as the prospectors, because you can kind of build around over here and you'll find plenty of spots to be able to build those cheap TPs. Um, expensive TP is not good for the prospectors because those are three coins. That's, I mean, that's basically almost an entire other spade, right? Uh, spade plus power plus victory points. So like you really don't want to be building expensive TPs as the prospectors if you can avoid it at all. So look for starting spots that are going to give you neighbors more so than leech. All right, openings, our favorite topic. Uh, and so the prospectors, unlike many factions, as I alluded to earlier, don't need to build a temple or a stronghold or a sanctuary in round one. In fact, I think the optimal prospectors opening is two TPs and three dwellings. Um, and so to do that, you need two extra workers, right? So you can start with five workers as the prospectors. So uh, in general, my philosophy for prospectors openings are, if you get a coin tile, like the six coin tile, which is excellent for them, get the workers action, use some coins to dig, use some coins to upgrade and end with, uh, and you might be able to get the coins action too, which is also often not in as much demand in round one. And you can end with two TPs and three dwellings. You will be producing four workers and seven coins for round two, and you will uh, be off to the races. If you can only build two TPs and two dwellings, that's totally fine too. Um, but so yeah, if you get coins, take workers. If you get a worker tile, take coins. <laughs> um, it's kind of the opposite, right? Um, and you can, you can kind of make both of them work. Um, and then the third option for the prospectors in terms of pros, uh, past tiles is if you get your hands on the priest or the spade, and I would say this is most interesting to do when, as we talked about before, you have one of these brown rewards in round one. Because remember, the spade is basically a priest and two coins. So first of all, if the priest and the spade tile are like the two you're deciding between, take the spade 100% of the time. Not only is it better in that it denies it to other factions who usually want it more than the priest, but it gives you two extra coins, which is half a spade to you. Um, so basically take that and send that priest to earth um, and you'll get some rewards right away. If round one is not an earth cult reward, I would highly encourage just taking resources, workers or coins. Um, maybe if round two is, if you think that priest is gonna be valuable. Um, also, if these uh, round one is earth rewards and you do start with just coins or um, workers, feel free to take the priest action, try to send it to earth and hit that reward. Um, those are really, really good rewards for the prospectors. Um, the other scenario, um, if you're not gonna open with TPs and dwellings, would be if you wanna build a temple. Um, I personally don't think this is right most of the time. Basically, do it if you get a ton of resources. If you get like extra leech and you're able to get like the workers action and the coins action, or if you get, um, for example, if you had your five workers to start and you took the big building tile, that's seven, and you got the workers action, that's nine, and maybe you got the coins action, then you could actually have enough to open like, for example, temple, two TPs, 
and another dwelling, right? If I'm doing my math right, or another couple dwellings, right? Like if you can get all of that, of course, go for it. Build the, build the temple. Um, or maybe if it's uh, temple scoring, or the one other time you might consider a temple sort of not having an absolute abundance of resources is again, if you have brown coat rewards, but you aren't able to get your hands on a priest via one of these bonus tiles or the priest action, then that temple for like an earth two um, to hit you over this one, particularly if it's the, uh, the town one, that might be worth it, right? You could build, for example, like uh, you could finish the round with TP, like if you got two workers, you could finish the round with TP temple, and a dwelling, um, and the Earth Court War, and, eh, and Earth Two. That's that's still a pretty good balanced economy. That TP is basically replacing, or sorry, that Temple is basically replacing the second TP. So it's the equivalent three coins. Your the the fire or Earth Two uh, favorite tile replaces a dwelling. So you're producing basically the same amount, and you've got a Temple up. So that's fine. But most games, honestly, in prospectors that I've seen go well, is just build some combination of TPs and dwellings, as many as you can. I would encourage more TPs over more dwellings. Um, so like two TPs and one or two dwellings I think is better than like one TP and four dwellings. Part of that is because the coins are so important, but also because remember the prospector's fourth dwelling is a blank. Um, and so having more than three dwellings out uh, doesn't help them nearly as much as having that extra TP and generating uh, additional coins. So. That's how you open with the prospectors. And by the way, on this map, like, right, if you are if you can just dig these browns, right, G5 to H7, like, all of that stuff still applies, right? Don't, even though you have sort of more access to spades than most factions, uh, it doesn't mean you want to spend resources more or inefficiently, right? Like, if you can dig through to browns and build them, absolutely, you should be doing that. Um, you know, every once in a while, maybe you're playing against uh, both black and gray in this game, and you want to, you know, spend two spades on D4 to cut off gray and also secure yourself some space, like go for it. You have that flexibility as the prospectors, particularly if you've gotten um, a bunch of coins. And that kind of goes into, I'll jump straight to the second bullet point here, is don't be afraid to double and triple dig as the prospectors. Uh, they have the ability to do this, especially if you're able to find a lot of coins. Um, if you need to be a little bit less efficient to get yourself out of a spot or to secure a good town spot. Like prospectors can, most games can find three towns. Um, make sure you do that. Just don't get boxed out of having enough hexes um, to do that. Even on base map, for example, if you start on F5 here and uh, there's no gray in the game, triple digging this F6 to get over to F7 is totally within reason, especially if like E9, if green is in the game on this hex and you cut them off and this makes their life a lot harder in addition to giving you a nice town space for, you know, basically as many hexes or spades as you would need anyways, because remember like this bridge is three coins. That's basically a spade, right? So this is like one, two, three spades, and this is only four. Um, and you don't have to build, rely on a bridge action. Um, so think about the, uh, the trade-offs in the economy. Remember also you get power back every time you do extra spades as the prospectors. So they actually cost a tiny bit less than it seems and victory points. So, um, you know, feel free to find those key hexes. I think the key is, um, especially if you're going to triple dig, you want it to both help you and ideally, at least, not necessarily hurt, but at least like hinder somebody else. Like, don't triple dig willy nilly, but like, especially if it gets you access to a natural brown that you weren't going to otherwise get to, or it uh, eliminates someone else's town space while securing for yourself. Like, feel free, go for it, even if it's early. I've seen triple digs in round one as prospectors work really, really well. Um, this F6 or sometimes this E7, which gives you immediate connection. There are other examples, but um, it can work is the point. All right, let's go back to the, after we've opened, what are we keeping in mind? Uh, the first bullet point might actually be the most important one. Always keep that first TP up. That four coin first TP for the prospectors is the most important income on their board. That is a spade and a power just for leaving that trading post up. So unlike almost Every other faction where it's like, eh, trading posts actually are kind of bled to lead up. You're mostly building them to either open up space for more dwellings or just to get to a temple. For the prospectors, that building is amazing. And only in the rarest of circumstances would I suggest not having at least that one TP, if not two, up at the end of any given round because the prospector's coin economy, just keeping those coins coming in because you need them for buildings and spades is so, so, so important. Um, we kind of covered this one with the double and triple dig 
but the prospectors do have the ability to be a little bit aggressive, um, you know, especially if it helps you to cut somebody off, depress the game score a little bit, get a little dirty. Um, you know, prospectors are digging around in the mud, right? Like this, this is the types of game that, that they play and that they are successful. Um, you're not probably going to win the game as the prospectors by racing out to some crazy score and just hitting a higher ceiling than everybody else. You want to make it a bit of a a bit of a fight because you have the flexibility to do so and other factions may not. Um, finally, we didn't really talk about the spade power actions, which for the most part for prospectors are not great. The four power one in particular is basically four power for a spade. Like that's just strictly worse than the priest power action. But double spade, I've seen select instances where it can be really useful, especially if you don't build any temples early on. Um, it can be a really good way to get priests, especially if you have the extra, if you've gotten a lot of leech or you have the extra power left over to use it. Um, or sort of the, po the point right above it here is remember if you actually want to produce a priest as the prospectors off your board, you either need two temples or the sanctuary. And so often the way that I like to play the prospectors is only having TPs up, two or even three TPs through a couple of rounds until hopefully around three or four temple or big building scoring and at that point going straight from either to uh whatever tps i have to two temples or straight to a sanctuary so that then i can actually start producing um producing priests because uh, as we said before unlike other factions where jumping up to the temple starts producing priests and like that is so much more valuable than the coins that the tps produce that first tp for the prospectors produces the same number of coins as that second uh, or sorry, that first temple produces the same number of coins as the second TP. And so spending a bunch of stuff on that upgrade just to have it sit there at the end of the round like that isn't really, really that useful. Um, another thing I didn't put on this uh, slide but is important is, you know, even though they get a little points off the digs, like prospectors probably are going to need um, a scoring favor as most uh, factions do. And um, because they build a lot, you know, TPs early they they uh like round two three four earth one is like ideal for them now if you're playing in a game with players who like to rush earth one that can put them in a bit of a, of a tricky spot and so then you have to think about okay maybe an earlier air one since they're only having always having um tps up or even just build a couple tps and then you know in a round where you can build like a temple or two and a couple tps to replace those take water one and score that way. Um, but don't forget about scoring as the prospectors, I guess is the point um, because they are not a very culty faction. They don't have very many priests. Um, sometimes they can get an early two key town. And as I was talking about, sometimes snowballing the, the cult reward priest, but I would say that's, you know, the rare situation, the more common situation is they just don't score that many points on the cult. So they're probably not getting a bunch of points there and network even though they have the ability to kind of dig around and get where they want, um, that digging is still expensive. It still just costs a lot of coins and a lot of resources. And so it's less likely they're going to get to the real heights of like, you know, 15, 16 structures. And so they're probably somewhere in the middle. Like they're going to, you know, they're going to do better than obviously factions like the Swarmlings or some of these factions that like to play more tall games. Um, but they're also not great, right? Like if they're up in, uh, you know, up in a game against like the architects, for example, who we talked about last time, you know, they're at a disadvantage from a network perspective. So they do need to score points on the track um, along the way. Use that TP scoring tile. That's, that's super helpful. Um, okay. So hopefully this has been a good overview. Um, you know, I like to sort of mention at the very end of it all, my sort of overall thoughts on the prospectors. Uh, like from a, or every faction from a power, like sort of general strength perspective, I think the prospectors are pretty good. When they first came out, um, I thought they were on the weaker side um, and they didn't make any tweaks to them. They, they, you know, they're in the exact same iteration other than the name, um, which they changed. But the, uh, the exact same iteration is when they came out and, and they've kind of just been steadily going up in my rankings and perception as I just continue to see them find ways to do well, find ways to play a little dirty, um, and I, you know, I think they're probably above average, uh, at this point in my ranking. So don't feel afraid to, you know, play them there. They're not weak by any means. Um, so go enjoy the prospectors. Let me know in the comments how your games are going, or again, come find me on 
uh, BGA and just get coins when you play with prospectors. Coins actions, coin tiles, TPs, that's what it's all about. You can literally, you know, always in Terra Mystic, you can never have too much coins, but the prospectors, you really can never have uh, too much coins. So go gold digging and you'll be in a great spot. Uh, all right, until next time, uh, see y'all later.